Good evening, church. Can we rise up to our feet? And those that are watching online, good evening. Wherever you are, I just want you to stir up a desire. I want you to stir up a desire. When you come to the presence of your father, you come with an expectation, with a desire, with an image of Jesus with an image of what you want to see him do in service. Come and begin to stir up a desire wherever you are. In your rooms, in your cars, in your houses, stir up a desire. Lord, we want to see you. We want to experience you. We want to know you. We want to touch you. We want to see your face. From worship to prayers to the word and to the creed, oh God. We want to see you just you, oh God. Wherever you are, I want you to do it consciously. Stir up a desire. Stir up a desire. God, this is what I want to see happen today. God, I want to experience you. I want to touch you. I want to know you. I want to feel you. I'm not going to go back the same way I came. I'm going to lay down all the burdens. Everything, everything that easily besets me. I'm going to set it aside. I come before the throne of grace that I may receive mercy. Raise up a desire. I don't want 
will sing your praises to the ends of the world. Hallelujah. Sing Faithful are you, Lord, to me, me. You deserve the praise. Faithful are you, God. Merciful have you been to me, my Father. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Jesus, you deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Sing worthy is your name. Worthy is your name.
trust in you and we will wait on you Jesus the son of God we will wait on you. we will
Kaparata was still worshiping. Lamando Kaparate Katala Bakaparate Kata, Ashila Parate Kata was still worshiping. Lambano Rata Kata, oh Father, my heart bless you. Lamparato Pella Bakata, Lambrato Parata Kata, thank you, Father, for all that you have done. Thank you, Father, thank you, Jesus. Worship him, worship him. In the next few minutes, we have to go. I ascribe the glory due to you. I worship you in the splendor of your holiness. Father, be magnified. Lord, be glorified. Truly in my life. Yes, Lord, be glorified. Rate barato barate kata, shela bara 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 kala bara diya kata, ale bara kata. Yes, Lord, take all the glory. Barato kata kata. Why don't you look into the past and see how God has brought you thus far, and His word of prophecy to you every time about the great and mighty things He is set to do. Marato Balaba. Oh, thank you, Father, for fruitfulness. Thank you, Father, for multiplication. Thank you, Father, for increased finances. Thank you, Father, for expansion. Thank you, Father, for favor all around. Thank you, Father. Lembarato Balabakata. In my life, in my family, in my with my friends, in the new church. Thank you, Father. Lakaparato Balabana Kaparatekata. Oh Lord, we bless you. Lambarato Bella Bakaparatekata. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name we worship. Hallelujah. For in Jesus' name we worship. Hallelujah. We're going to be praying the next few minutes. And there is something, when I read that particular verse of the scripture, Psalms 18, pardon me, Matthew 18, 20, when Jesus will be admonishing, teaching his disciples, saying, where two or three of you are gathered in my name, the am with them. And when I look at us tonight, where we are here from all over, from work, from all of those things, and we are here gathered in one accord, in the name of Jesus, declaring, in the name of Jesus, requesting, in the name of Jesus, bringing about, making power available in the place of prayer. And that's what going to be in the next few minutes. When I look in the scripture as well, in Acts 1, scripture talks about how the disciples, they were gathered in one place. And in the scripture, we heard what happened, we know what happened, as the rushing mighty wind. Acts for as well. They were there in one accord, asking God for one thing, that you grant us boldness. And scripture says they got that boldness. And tonight we're going to pray now from the scripture in Psalms 90 verse 17. Amplified classic. P.S. has been teaching us something, the word from God concerning us uh, as a church, as a people of God in this season, which is favor. And we're going to be praying that line as well in this evening. We're going to be praying Psalms 90 and verse 17. And he says, and let the beauty and delightfulness and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Somebody say amen. amen. Confirm and establish the work of our hands. Say amen. amen. Yes, the work of our hands. Confirm and establish it. Say amen. amen. And when we come together like this in the place of prayer, that is what, where we engage the corporate prayer. You might be there, you might be feeling like, oh, I have a lot of weight in my heart. I have a lot of things I'm thinking about. But what I want you to leverage on is that word from God that says, where two or three are gathered together, in my name there I am with them. That's everything you need tonight. Where two or three of us are here, calling on the name of Jesus, asking God in prayer for something. And right there we are saying that, Lord, let your beauty, let the delight, fullness, and favor of the Lord our God be upon us. If you are here tonight and you know that, yes, the favor, the delightfulness, that the beauty of God will be upon you. I want you the next few minutes, raise your voice, raise your hands and begin to declare and begin to lay a decree. Begin to lay hold of this word from God. The Father in the name of Jesus, Lord will believe and will receive that which is the beauty, the lightfulness and favor. For according to your word, that you say that you shall bless the righteous and with favor you shall encompass. With favor you shall surround. With favor you shall come around as all in the name of Jesus. The Father in the name of Jesus, that I'm here tonight in this place, that I do not miss out on your move in this ministry, that your word to us in this season 
which is a favor like a paradigm it finds expression in my life leparado bela bagata radokata el leparado bela bagata radokata el leparado bela bagata that in the name of jesus that the works of our hands my word is established in the name of jesus begin to declare even though there is nothing you are doing right now by faith begin to declare by faith begin to mention the things that you desire in your heart let your parada that place you want to be that particular position you desire that particular contract you desire that particular place you see begin to decree and declare that in the name of jesus by the reason of the favor of the lord let your parada gada so and so and so is established in my life let your parada gada love gada is god and you you and god tonight let your parada gada remember we are gathered in the name of the lord and surely there is going to be liberty surely there is going to be miracles signs and wonders let your parada gada love gada a shila parada gada love gada gada a shila parada gada love gada a shila parada gada love gada a la parada gada love gada in everything I lay my hands upon it is blessed in the name of Jesus in everything I set my hands to do I set my gaze to do let parado gata la gata shwale it is encompassed with favor a la parado bala ka parado gata a shitala mala ka parado gata a shala ka parado gata la bagata la bagata gata a istopa a rate ka parado gata le hod le hod le hod right now la parado bala gata a shitala bagata a la bagata for this is an opportune time let ka parado in one accord la parado gata a shitala bagata la bagata a parado bala gata a shitala ka parado gata and yes in the name of Jesus we enter we move let ka parado gata into a season of great favor great manifestation of favor all around la parado bala bagata la gata el di parado in our going out in our coming in we are favored in the name of Jesus let ka parado where we are or where our name is we are favored in the name of Jesus la parado bala gata a shita la bala bala gata oh i begin to experience favor la parado bala bala gata gata a shita la gata la leo 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 la parado gata a shita la bala bala gata gata a li parando bala bala gata gata a jela bala bala gata 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 a jela gata and truly there shall be nothing my so broken like it in my life as the reason of favor la parado a shita la bala bala gata in everything i do la parado the favor of god is made manifest let ka parada begin to declare this words remember the teachings of ps wherever we come by faith we begin to declare because we believe it we believe it to be so we begin to declare we begin to declare rato kata use your words let parato kata begin to lay hold of the promises in christ begin to lay hold of all the things that have made available for you in christ jesus begin to lay hold of everything that is scripture has said that let the beauty and the lightness and favor of the lord be upon me in the name of jesus and so shall it be verily 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 so shall it be in my life la parado bala gada a shela bada kabara gada a la parado bala bala kabara gada a shela bada a la ikata ropa tika parado bala bada kabara gada a shita la bada if you know somebody is a friend or a family member begin to believe God for them and begin to say yes the favor of God encompasses them begin to tell them that yes the favor of God is upon them begin to say that yes that the lord confirm the works of their hands la parado gada a shiba la bada kabara gada a shela bada kabara gada a la bada gada gada man do parado bala bada kabara gada a shita la bada kabara gada will you ask the consigo la parado gada a shila bada kabara gada a shela bada kabara gada hallelujah in jesus mighty name we pray if you know you have received what you have prayed for i would like you to say believe in amen in jesus name we've prayed I'm going to be declaring with that same tempo with that same belief with that same understanding that whatsoever thing we say we receive the word with confession we're going to be declaring together with me it's going to be shown on the screen 3 2 1 in the name of Jesus today i decree concerning every area of my life i reproduce and i am fruitful from today i multiply and experience the testimony of explosion the hand of god is upon my life and i experience accelerated growth in all aspects of my life 
I am divinely assisted, I'm marvelously helped by God, and my life experiences exponential explosion. The wind of testimony has been blown in my direction, amen. In the name of Jesus, the beauty of God is upon my life. It causes me to be favored and attractive, and the works of my hands are established. I have entered into a season of partners, and I am robust. My business, career, finances are robust. Everything that is due to me has come to me now in the name of Jesus. I am part and flourishing in the name of Jesus. The attention of God is upon me. The spotlight of God is upon my life. I am a city set upon a hill that cannot be hidden. My potentials, gifts, business, career and graces are visible. I cannot be hidden. By the Spirit, I enter into divine opportunities and I am set up for divine upliftment. I am reshuffled for elevation, manifestation and expansion. Come and declare in the name of Jesus. I lay hold of what is mine at every season of my life. I resist every opposition and condemn every voice of manipulation in my life. And I step fully into the plan and purpose of God for my life. Where my life and destiny is concerned, I am divinely preserved and protected. As a son, I experience divine direction and I do not go where grace has not led me. Say the shield of protection is around me and all that concerns me. Concerning my family, business, career, finances, relationships, I announce a no bright zone for every swarm of flies in the name of Jesus. That's what. Let no man talk from me, for I have held my body with marks of Christ. I have marked my family, business, and all that concerns me is marked. This season I enjoy angelic assistance in all my endeavors. My angels are on guard at all times, and I'm ever defended. Nothing around me is permitted to break down. In this season, I am unleashed to fly. Every snare is broken, and I have escaped. From today, I wear a robe of royalty, and I'm beautified by grace. I come into a season of unprecedented opportunities and growth, a season of uncommon results, massive harvest, and household blessing. The spirit of favor is highlighted over me and my household in the name of Jesus. I decree the angels are dispersed to bring his words to pass and make them my reality to come on around. I declare that I am blessed. The blessing of the Lord that maketh sweet and add no sorrow is upon me. The blessing is in me, on me, and round me. The blessing that created in my going out and in my coming in and all that I'm about. And the blessing causes me to prosper. From today, the whirlwind of opportunity, open doors, financial increase, healing, breakthrough, testimony has been flown in my direction. My testimony is now. My set time is now. And I rejoice. Rejoice again. I say rejoice. And with Jesus' joy, let's welcome our senior pastor. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, our God. You are. time. You are Alpha. You are Alpha. And oh, we worship you. Oh, Lord. And you
know the song. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Wow. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. And God of glory. Majesty. Praise forever to the King. Let's sing one more time. Praise the Father.
to sing that song to three, four people prophetically. I'm going to sing to the Lord and dance to the Lord with that song. What my father, what my mother, what my neighbor, what my cousin, what my uncle, what no one has done for me. He has done it for me. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All right. He has done it for me. Sing to someone. If you are watching at home, just join in. What my father can do. to learn how to mix your faith with thanksgiving. Yes, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I, I, receive I receive every single thing, every single thing that, I've that I've thanked God for. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, it said, be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. It says, let your requests be made known to God. Look at the next verse. It doesn't end there. It says, and the peace of God. And the peace of God that surpasses it. It says, would guard your heart and mind through Christ. So what's the combination? Go to verse 6. You see the combination there. The combination is what? Prayers, supplication, and what? The same way you cannot eat um, rice and um, rice and yam. People eat that. This Nigerian said, <laughs> okay, at least you can't eat rice and okra. <laughs> People eat here. <laughs> okay, you can't eat beans and egg. You mix it together. All right, let's get, there's problem, let's get into the world. But, you know, there are certain foods that require certain combinations. So for you to get your request answered before God, you have to combine these things properly together. You combine prayer, supplication, with. If you eat very well and you don't drink water, you sometimes feel like something is missing. With Thanksgiving. Prayer, supplication is the food. With Thanksgiving is the water that allows the thing to wash it down. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, some people drink water like this. <laughs> uh -huh. So that's... Amen. Amen. Somebody say, I have my answers. I have my answers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Welcome to church. 
and um, we're going to have an amazing time this evening. Are you excited about this? Something very strange happened today, and, I, and I'll tell you that in a moment. Um, but why, while we are present here, let's put our hands together for our online audience. The online army. And let's shout so that they can hear you. Say, welcome to church. Say we love you. We love you. And we are together in spirit. We are together in spirit. Make, sure Make sure you supply your faith. Because right, right here, I'm supplying mine. I'm supplying mine. And when our faith come together, we are unstoppable. unstoppable. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 All right, I'd like to encourage you to share the link of the service. Um, if you're here, share the link. If you're watching online as well, um, take a moment and share the link. Somebody is going to be truly, tremendously blessed by this teaching today. In fact, I'm going to explain a few things before I get into the Word because the Lord did something marvelous today. Yeah, and i explain in a moment. Um, so share the link, please. Let's, let's put a link out there. Send it to your WhatsApp communities, your friends, your family. You know, this, this is a moment for you to retaliate to your mom, you know. Your mom that sends you all those funny videos. Uh, <laughs> those um, one chicken with five legs. <laughs> you know. And sardine that came out from... Um, Marine spirit, don't eat a hand. All those kind of videos you see now. So retaliate by sending out the word or your mom or your dad or that cousin at work, family at, at, at work, or we have family at work, friend at work, a cousin, a brother, a nephew, a sister. Let's share the link to them. Wow, today is going to be so powerful. I can see, I can tell. And I know it's your grace on my days. All right, let, let me tell you why. Have you shared the link? Yes, sir. Are you ready for the word? Yes, sir. Oh, this is a supernatural army. Are you ready for the word? Yes, All right, let me tell you why I said today is going to be an amazing day. Because before I go there, how many of you have been blessed by the wild wind of testimonies? Look, I sense in my heart that it's, it's, it's just going to another level and another level and another level. I'm truly in awe of the, of the testimonies that I've been hearing. Um, I think I'm just going to find time to take a week and we'll just, we'll just do testimonies alone. God has truly been doing something in our church. Listen to me, children of God. In, in this church, look, everybody, let me get your attention. Whenever God wants to do anything, it starts inside out. If God is going to bless you with anything, the Bible says the one that works in us both to will and to do, it would usually start inside out. Whenever God wants to change a nation, it changes a city, it changes a person, it changes a ministry, the work would first be internal, then external. Praise the Lord. That's why God told Moses, he says, come and I will send you to Pharaoh. He did not say go to Pharaoh and then come and meet me. He says, come, then I will send you to Pharaoh. In other words, if God wants to change you, for him to send you, the work will start from within you. He would have to reveal himself to you as I am that I am before he then tells you go and meet Pharaoh and tell the children of Israel that he wants to let the children of Israel go. He should let the children of Israel go. I said all of that to say that God is doing something so powerful internally, internally amongst us in the new. How many of you can sense that? How many of you know that? I hope you are really aware. 
and conscious about this. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss what God is doing. Somebody lift your two hands. If you're online, lift your two hands and say this to me. Say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I declare that God, whatever you are doing in this season, in my generation, in my local church, don't do it without me. Do you believe that? Oh yes, God is moving mightily. He's moving mightily in the new. So I want to encourage you to join the wow wind of testimonies and you can also share your testimonies. Not to worry, we're going to collate all of these testimonies in a moment and we're going to show them so that it can encourage other people's faith. Today, God has given me a special instruction. That's what I wanted to talk about first. So we started a series called Tongue and Tongues every Tuesday and Wednesday. How many of you have been blessed by that series? Right? I suspect just by studying and researching and praying, I suspect that this series might last up until maybe June, July, August. Because there's so, there's so many parts. In fact, I'm still talking about tongue and I've not even started talking about tongues. The tongues there is praying. Okay? Um, why do we pray in tongues? What's the purpose of praying in tongues? What's the concept of praying in tongues? What is the result of praying in tongues? And after praying in tongues, what is the LinkedIn line between praying in tongues and meditation? So there's so much to unravel and unpack with this series. And so while this week my expectation and what I was praying for and understand and studying is to study and teach on um, the spiritual implication of murmuring where your tongue is concerned, using your tongue to murmur. And while I was praying and studying, in fact, I was already putting my sermon note together. And this afternoon, I realized that I started to pray in the office and I was praying and I started to pray very intensely, praying intensely and praying intensely. And in that moment, I knew that I was interceding. And so the Lord said to me, what I want you to do in this service is to take a question and answer session. Now listen to me very carefully. On the four part series that has been done so far on tongue and tongues. But this time around, it's not only from the lens of I don't understand this or I need to explain this or I need to expand on this. It is now more on the practicality of that matter. In other words, you are in a state and listen you can ask me any question whatsoever you are in a state in fact let me show you something in the scriptures let's go to exodus chapter 1 exodus chapter 14 turn that down a little bit all right spirit of the living god move right here in the name of the lord jesus the lord says while i was coming says to tell the people that tonight it says they've come to the mountain of answers. So if you have questions whatsoever, your family related questions, questions, you, look, we are going to use a slider so you might not, some people might want to ask, you know, raise your hands to ask. Nobody will know it is you. Some people are battling with deep challenges, financial challenges, they don't know what to do. But the prophetic, that's why Today's service is going to be a prophetic navigation. I'm going to show you something in the scriptures in a moment so that you can understand what's, going about, what's about to happen in this service today. And I promise you by the Spirit of the Lord that you would go back to listen to this message again and again and again and again and again. This is the practicality of the four-part series. Is somebody following me? Praise the Lord. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 10. Let me just give you an insight uh, that the Lord showed me and I'll just use this as a background for you so that when you start asking your question you will know that what God wants to do here tonight is to help you answer long-standing situations by wisdom praise the Lord the Bible says in Exodus chapter 14 verse 10 it says and when Pharaoh drew near the children of Israel lifted up their eyes and behold the Egyptians marched after them and so they were very afraid and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. Watch this. The Bible says, and then said to Moses, 
because there was no grave in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Please change that for me completely. It says, why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? Is this not the word that we told you in Egypt saying, let us alone that we may serve the Egyptian for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptian than that we should die in the wilderness. The Bible says, and Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Look at, look at the role of a leader there. It says, do not be afraid. Stand still. In other words, stay there. Just pause. Stay at one spot. It says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. It says, which it would accomplish to you today. So you see, Pharaoh was just talking out of the fact that I, I can boast in this God. So just stand there. You will see the word of the Lord today. You will see the might of the Lord today. It says, for the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see no more. Look at what the Bible says. The Bible says, the Lord will fight for you and you would hold your peace. And the Lord said to Moses, in other words, after Moses was done bragging and boasting of the Lord before the people, Moses went to God. That's why the Bible says, and the Lord said to Moses. In other words, there was an intercession at a point where Moses knew that, hey, this thing that we are saying is true. This is the Red Sea. And this is the Egyptians coming. Are we going to die here together now? But Moses as a leader had to stand before the people and encourage the people to say, don't worry, God is going to do it for you. Don't worry, just stand there and God is going to do it for you. But the next thing God did right there was God told Moses, he says, why are you crying to me? Tell the people to move forward. In other words, in the place of facing God and speaking to God, the answer for them was to move forward. What Moses told the children of Israel to do before was to stand still. Standing still and moving forward are two different things. Sometimes standing still is not the situation, solution. Sometimes it's to move forward. Sometimes people think that, okay, just when you don't know what to do, just wait. While that is correct, sometimes there is a word of the Lord in the situation. Listen, it means that what is known whenever there are certain conditions might be what must be told, might be what is told to you. Which means when you are going through the situation, do like this, do like this. But there is a word from God that can give you clarity for you in your own situation to say, your own is not to stand though, your own is to move forward. But that did not happen until Moses heard the voice of God. This is what I did all through today. Studying and writing my sermon notes for this message, for today's service, I usually will start writing my sermon notes on the Monday before Tuesday. And while I was preparing, I was excited to teach on complaining and murmuring. The Lord says, answer questions for people. It says, I want you to tell the people to move forward. But you're going to prophetically answer questions for them. Again, I say to you, if you have any question whatsoever, online viewers, please do the same as well. I hope we'll be able to take as many. By prophetic roadmap, prophetic roadmap, every question would have a light bulb moment. You will know exactly what to do by the Spirit. You know, I don't have to come and stand here and do heli, 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 lamantabansani. I don't have to do that. <laughs> Amen. 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 Let me show you something. Exodus chapter, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 13, Ezekiel 13 and verse 1. Ezekiel 13 and verse 1. The Bible says, And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel, who prophesy and say to those who prophesy out of their own hearts. Say to those that just prophesy out of their own hearts. He says, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Woe to the foolish prophets who follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. He says, Woe to them. O Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. You have not gone up into the gaps to build a wall for the house of Israel to stand in battle on the day of the Lord. In other words, you have not gone up into intercession for them. The Bible says, they have envisioned fealty and false divination saying, thus says the Lord, but the Lord has not sent them yet. They hope that the word may be confirmed. 
Why are they open that the word will be confirmed? Because they just want to say something. But how do you say something to the people when intercession happens? God led me into deep intercession today. So there's answers for you. Is somebody hear what I'm saying here? He says, you have not seen a failed vision and you have not spoken false divination. You say that the Lord says, but I have not spoken. Thus says the Lord God, because you have spoken nonsense and a vision lies. Therefore, I am a deed against you, says the Lord of hosts. Now, let me close with this so that we can start. Second Kings chapter 5. We're not going to read it. Second Kings chapter 5. If you read verse 1, remember the story of Naaman. When the prophet told him, he says, Elisha told him, you are going to go and jump into the river seven times. He said, me. I thought that he would just come and wave his hands and say, me like this. I'll go and jump. The lady, the better jump. Oh. By the reason of those prophetic answers that will come, some of those questions will be a general question for somebody. It will be a question for somebody, but it will answer many things for other people in this place. For the past two days, we have been praying for finances as a church. In this prophetic roadmap, the Bible says the labor of the fool weary them, for they do not know how to enter into the city. In this prophetic roadmap today, and knowing how to use your tongue, and understanding the engineering of deception, I want to use this day to close up the four-part series of tongue and tongues, part A. And then from tomorrow in the Lake Church, in the Island Church, I'll start the teaching on murmuring. Glory to God. So if you have any question whatsoever along those lines, I want you to ask, and we're going to take it from there. Are you ready? All right. How do we want to do this? I told Dickie no living day. So Dick, are you going to help me with this? Okay, come. Can I get a chair as well that I can see? Move, move forward. You can move this aside and give me that round. And let's move this away. Okay, so talk to me. We have questions already. Or you want me to, to just look at it? I don't need that. Anymore. Praise the Lord. Just move like this, okay. You remove that, okay. Thank you. Oof, thank you, Lord. Are you ready for today? You can move this away. Every thongs in heaven and earth. Shall declare your glory, heavenly shall bow at your throne. In worship you be exalted, O Lord, and your kingdom shall not pass away, O ancient of days. Thank you, Lord. One more time. Every knee in heaven and earth shall declare your glory. Every knee shall bow at your throne. In worship you be. And your kingdom shall not pass. Let's take it one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. In heaven and earth shall declare your glory and shall bow at your throne in worship you be exalted.
exalted, O Lord, that your kingdom shall not There are faces in life and ministry. There are faces in your journey. You see, there are certain faces that the only vocabulary that is understood in that face is your intense intentionality with spiritual warfare. Let me explain what spiritual warfare means. Many of us fight spiritual warfare with the weapon of hope. Listen, hope is a powerful force However, spiritual warfare, can, you can anchor the expectation with hope. But hope would not fight spiritual warfare. Many times people expect that if I wait too long, after some point, this thing would, would, would pass over me. Look, one of the stories in the Bible was the guy who waited by the waterside for this many years. In anticipation that something, 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 somehow would something would finally happen in his life. And every year the time was going, every year the clock was going, and he did not rescue his moment. You see, when it comes to spiritual warfare, please listen to me. That's the first thing God put in my spirit. There are times you get into a certain phase of your life, you know it. That to break these walls down, I have to consecrate myself in some intensity of prayer. That's the only way to break these certain walls down. This particular wall that I'm seeing here would not respond to my shouts. It would not respond to certain things that I do. It understands service, but the key to open this door is not the service. Are you guys hearing what I'm saying here? The key to open this particular door is intensity of prayer. The kind that you will start praying, but and while you are praying, you will be feeling certain resistance in the place of prayer. Now listen to me very carefully. You get to that point of continuous resistance, and you know, children of God, I'm speaking prophetically, those who know what I'm talking to, it connects something in your heart. And you know that you can no longer fight this one by yourself. In other words, you have broken other chapters of the resistance, but you've gotten to a point of stronghold. Sometimes the stronghold there is even you. Sometimes the stronghold there are spiritual occultic warfare. And you know by yourself you can't fight it anymore. If you watch movies, one of the things you would observe is that when a man is outpowered or outnumbered, what would he do? He would call for backup. You get to a point where you know that you have to call for friends to help you push and to help you fight. Woe to him that is alone. Woe to him that is alone. You have done everything to do. You are, you've done it all. But you keep feeling like this thing hasn't... You know it in your spirit. You know it in your spirit. This thing hasn't entered through yet. The answer are the people you are dining and eating with all along. Those four, three, five friends that you call your friends, call them deep within your spirit. Be open and vulnerable to those situations and get them in agreement with you. When you get them in agreement with you and you start breaking those doors in the place of prayer, what is going to happen after that is that it will get to a point you will sense that they've done their job. The other thing that will now start coming out will be instructions of what you now need to do after the walls have been broken down. What happens to people many times is that they are receiving instructions first, but the walls are not broken down yet. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? The walls are not broken down yet, but they are receiving instruction. And while the instructions are necessary, the walls must break down so that there are no stronghold against those instructions. 
Praise the name of the Lord. And let me say this here. Spiritual warfare. All right. Let me just say this way. Some spiritual warfare. All right. Listen to me, everybody. I will still say it. Are you aware that there can be no love if there is no hate? Yeah. What that means is for you to truly love you must hate something. <laughs> Listen to me very deeply. Yo. Anything God loves he defends what he hates. I said that to connect something to you. You must get to a point where you are no longer okay with that phase of your life. And listen to me very carefully. One of the toughest, I wish I was not online, but I'll say it. Some of you's warfare requires complete dissociation from certain relationships, certain friendships, and in certain cases, certain family members. If you continue to live, act, react, the programming continues. Praise the Lord. Take your life in your hands. You only have one. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes, you are too nice. You've chosen a choice. To allow your own journey suffer for people you met on the earth. Let me say this here. Don't take it out of context. Jesus said that I've not come, he said I've come with a sword to cut mother and child. Father, he said I come with a sword. Though. Now we can explain that in context to certain things. But listen. There are certain things in your life you know. What, require, what, it is, what is required of me to come into the next chapter of my life is that certain old things must go. There are people here that you are too sentimental with destiny. You should have been operating in your you should have been operating in your future yesterday but you are lying in waste in your yesterday don't take your ex into your next <laughs> now that was funny don't don't take your ex into your next and don't make your next your ex don't because Egypt would always have the pot of meat Exodus 16 they would Exodus 15 they will always be the pot of meat in Egypt the moment the children of Israel cannot eat bread they would think about the pot of meat in Egypt and forget that they had gold have you wondered they left 
Egypt with gold. They had gold in their hands, even though the gold was with them in the wilderness. Gold will buy any pot of meat they want to eat. But they were held bound by the fact that my use, how, you, how, how connected I am with Egypt and my the, 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 the ability to live in Egypt comfortably, even though in their sight it was comfort. At least I will work so hard and get something from Egyptian. As opposed to living in the wilderness and learning to trust God. I've said so many things in coded form. So. You would rather live in the plenty of another than to live in the nothingness but trust God. Gold has already been given to you even though you cannot use gold yet in wilderness. But it's already given to you. You will forget the gold and look back at the pots of meat for your belly in Egypt. Jesus says, look, do not say the harvest is four months away. He says, lift up your heads and see. The harvest is already before you. Lift up your heads and see. And listen. I'll go there later. Make critical decisions to your journey. Condemn voices, traceable voices of deception. Condemn it. Don't condemn it in hope. Condemn it in words. And disconnect from that oppression. Deception is a long list that can be wired in your subconscious. Many times deception is not even in your conscious. It's in your subconscious. But if you think deep, you will trace the lace of deception. If you trace the lace of deception, cut it off. The lace of deception doesn't necessarily mean somebody said take A and take B. I said there are two kinds of deception. There is self-deception and deception from, from the external. I'm not only talking about deception from the external. I'm also talking about your own self-deception. You might have deceived yourself that the best that can happen to you is what you are currently experiencing. Even though when you are in church, you believe that God is going to do mighty things with your life. But because of the consistent reality of your past, you have married the experiences of your past so much, it's so real to you, that you know the year is going to come and go again and nothing really going to happen, but I'll be vibrating in expectations with God. Am I talking to somebody here? I'll be vibrating with expectations with God, but at the end of the day, I don't really think anything is going to happen. Somewhere in your subconscious. You are believing God, but you are in deception that you don't think is going to do it for you. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. First question. Someone says, I have dreamt. I have dreamt twice about grieving my dad's death. I know I should pray, but I don't know how because I struggle with my prayer life. I don't quite understand this. Um, I have dreamt twice about grieving my dad's death. So it means that I've dreamt that my dad passed. Right? I know I should pray, but I don't know how because I struggle with my prayer life. Now, spiritual warfare, like I taught you the other day, this is a very powerful question, words of words, is that the devil operates this. Please listen to me very carefully. If I have some time, I would... Um, when we're talking about, sometimes this year when we're talking about how to be led by the Spirit of God, I will teach a bit on dreams because that's one area people don't understand. So people have asked me, P.S., what does it mean when I constantly see myself in my secondary school? What does it mean when I constantly see myself in my past? All of those things. I'm going to explain some of those things. Now, the, the Bible says that enemy disguises Satan, Lucifer, as the angel of light, right? Now, when you see a dream that your dad passed in this case. What happens? Now listen to me. Sometimes in, in the quest of us new creation realities teachers, of us teaching you your superiority over the works of darkness, subconsciously sometimes we might trivialize your weight in the spirits. Which means 
you wake up and say, once you see that, it cannot be. Once you see somebody eating, just wake up and eat the food as well. Now, someone is talking about their own spiritual experiences by the level of depth that they have. But you, that thing that you saw was a spiritual warfare going on whereby, look, if you hear this question very well, this question has become real to this person. So the spiritual warfare is, I can show you a dream and in that dream, I can make you marry and believe that that dream is going to happen. And somewhere in your heart, you are waiting for that dream to happen. You are waiting. That's why somebody says, I had a dream, something, something, but it didn't happen. And you are wondering, why are you saying it didn't happen? Were you expecting it to happen? Because the conditioning of the enemy is that everything I show you, particularly when you have a, a, a history of all your dream coming to pass. Listen, don't be trapped by that thing. Because it means that every dream that you dream that comes to pass, the day you dream that you die and it comes to pass, in your mind you have programmed yourself to death. Because you believe that all the dreams that you dream usually comes to pass. Sometimes it's a strategy of the enemy to drop in thoughts in your heart so that you can embrace it, believe it, and begin to see the programming happen in your life. Listen, the way spiritual warfare operates is you accept it, you must see it. So, in this case, you've had this dream twice. Don't say you are tired. Don't say... Uh, you stand up and declare spiritual warfare back by praying on that, on that situation and rebuking that foul spirit in operation. There are spiritual elements that God has also given to us. One of it is thanksgiving. And when I say thanksgiving, is warfare thanksgiving. You wake up and you are singing, Oh, single, single. You don't understand what I'm saying. You are dancing. I'm serving the Lord of miracles. I know. Yes, I know. You are singing. It's warfare. Is somebody following me there? Communion, breaking of bread, is warfare. Don't just say, forget it, you devil. Speak back. Don't leave it in your thoughts. Speak back. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? For example, there's somebody on the sound of my voice right here. You've had dreams consecutively that you saw yourself in rags. If you are that person, jump up now and come here. Come forward. You saw yourself in rags. Please, don't come and meet me outside and say, P.S., I'm the one. No. If that has happened to you, you've seen that dream once, twice, yourself in rags, please come forward. If there's anybody like that, please I want to pray for you. Come forward. Help me check if there's somebody that indicated online. I want to pray for you. Now, when, when you see these kinds of things, first thing you do is take a word of the Lord on longevity. For example, listen to this. The Bible says, No evil shall befall me, neither shall any plague come where my dwelling place. Your parents are part of your dwelling place. So anything that's going to touch anyone that's going to touch you is part of your dwelling place. So you can take that scripture and say, in the name of Jesus, this will not be my reality. And once you speak about it, you pray about it, you break bread, I gave you praying in spirit, I gave you breaking of bread, I gave you thanksgiving, praise the name of the Lord. If you do some of those things, the moment that, that action is done, don't go back and keep renewing, quote unquote, the altar. Don't be caught in that trap of you've not broken the altar. Look, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Go there, rebuke that thing. Once you deal with it once, move on from it. Sometimes the reason why you are going back over and over and over again is that fear has handicapped you. And listen, fear brings torment. And once torment enters into your heart, it's waiting to harvest itself there. Did somebody hear what I'm saying there? So, once you see that kind of dream, the series of it or the continuation of it in your life, attack it by the word of the Lord and don't expect to see that thing again. Now, when you say you are having difficulty with your prayer life, wild wind of testimony is ongoing. You should have programmed yourself 
to use wild wind of testimony to your advantage. Listen, one of the greatest blessings of wild wind of testimony is the programming is doing for you to give you an effective and a consistent prayer life. If you do this for one month, whereby you are programmed to wake up 7 a.m. every day to pray, what happens to you, unknown to you, even when it is all over, you wake up at 7 a.m. and you have to pray. Some of you should even set your alarm 6.30 a.m. So that you do your own 6.30 a.m. And in many 30 minutes, you join wild wind of testimonies. The testimony that must come out of your mouth after wild wind of testimony was that my prayer life was revitalized. The testimony should not only be that I got a big job. I got breakthrough. Because that is a one-off. What would last forever is the consistency and the efficiency of your prayer life. Somebody get what I'm saying there? So start out with wild wind of testimonies. Number two, get a group of friends that pray well or they love to pray and go and sacrifice yourself in some of them's house for one month. Listen, there comes a time in your life you must leave comfort so that you can enter the fullness of your potentials. Are you guys doing what I'm saying to you? You must sometimes leave comfort to enter into the fullness of your potentials. So if it means that you live in a five-bedroom duplex and you are prayerless in a five-bedroom duplex, it's better that you leave that five-bedroom duplex and go and squat in a one, one, one boy squatter or one bedroom with 20 people there that are prayerful. You revitalize your prayer life back, you can go back there. Don't go and stay in five-bedroom duplex where the witches are staying in the other four rooms. Praise the Lord. And let me say this here. We are in an intense season of gross darkness. You cannot joke with power gifts. You cannot joke with discernment. You cannot joke with praying in tongues. You cannot joke with your spiritual intensity. You cannot joke. The enemy is desensitizing people. The enemy is stealing from people. I'm telling you the truth. Is putting certain delays in the lives of people to steal time from them. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. His journey is very clear. So awaken the lion within you. Awaken it. Fasting, praying. For example, make it a personal decision tonight, not tomorrow. Tonight. Choose one day in the week to pray. One, uh, pardon me, to fast. One day. Don't just be chewing gum every day of the week. Christ has paid it all. Christ has paid it all. The Christ that was coming to pay it all still went to fast. And after he had paid it, before he went to pay it all, he was still praying for his disciples. <laughs> and then after he has paid it all, is now the high priest daily making intercession for us. Every day Christ is making intercession. He's praying every day. But he has paid it all. Don't be trapped by this thing. No. Don't go and hear teachings that would obstruct your mind. Scribble two tongues together and say, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. There's nothing wrong. Don't put yourself under extreme pressure whereby you now... But as a son, there are obligations. The language of the realms of the spirit is prayer. Is somebody getting what I'm saying there? If God wants to do anything on the earth, he puts a burden on men to pray. That's it. That's the spiritual protocol. If God wants to do anything on the earth, he puts a burden in a person to pray. The moment you start praying, then you can give access. Because prayer is an access in the natural. Is God giving, is you giving God access? That's what prayer does. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Did I answer that question? Praise the Lord. Someone says, how do I stop people pleasing? There's something inside of you that loves validation. If you don't know how to hone, listen to this. If you don't know how to own your no and own your yes, your life will end up in maybe. If you don't know how to own your no or own your... Look, 
this is very important many times the more you grow spiritually one of the the distinctions that we must find in a spiritually mature person should not only be your ability to pray in spirit must be your convictions in your decision making of yes or no what happens to people when you start saying why do I there's something inside of you that wants validation from people so every time you always have to say a yes because you want to please people first to answer the person's question define who you are accept your difference that you would forever be different from the next person accept your journey that you'll be forever different even in your journey and know eventually this that everyone that tried to please men in the bible didn't end well for them sorry i've taught something here can you come and help me again please everyone that tried to help to please people in the bible it didn't help well it didn't help well for them don't try to please men seek to always please god praise the lord let me tell you one of my experience Someone online that responded to the dream person in racks. Okay, the person is online. I'll pray for that person in a moment. Please, next time, let's be fast with this thing, because the anointing comes, and then, so. Let me tell you what that thing meant. I'm not a dream interpreter. People come and say, P.S., I had this dream. What does it mean? I'm not Joseph. And there is no ministry of, um, listen, no, there is no ministry of dream interpretation. It's tongues, diverse kind of tongue, and in, um, tongues and interpretation of tongues, not interpretation of dreams. Now you can have. It doesn't mean that your dream doesn't have meaning, but there are no. It's not that you are looking for Joseph that interpret dreams. Don't waste your time going to a school that's the school of dream interpretation. You are wasting your time. The Holy Ghost is already inside of you. Praise the Lord. And that's why some of you end up in more traps. Because the moment you have one dream, you have told your mom, you have told your dad, you have told your sister, they are now helping you to interpret everything. They've now interpreted rubbish for you. Now you are, you are, you are carrying rubbish as your reality unknown to you. So you saw one big horn. They now say it looks like a demon with a horn is around your life. Praise the Lord. So, how to stop people pleasing know that your journey is unique stop trying to stop trying to get validation from men realize that everyone that tries to please men not pleasing God it never ends well for them let me tell you one of my experiences so many years ago when I said never again will I try my my conviction is my conviction my decision is my decisions not to any man it was my dad that taught me and thank God for good fathers. He told me to do something, so I did it. Even though I didn't, I knew that's what I wasn't supposed to do. So I now did it. So the thing didn't work. So he now told me that, why did you do it? After you knew that that's not what you should do. He said, I'm teaching you a life lesson. When you are sure of your decisions, hold on to your convictions. Don't try to please men. Because at the end of the day, you'll be trapped by men. You two, you have done it before now. Somebody tells you to say, hey, you, do, you two, when you were doing it, didn't you see? But you were the one that advised the person to do it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Pleasing people brings a lot of delay. Yes. Sir, you prophesy some of us may have to leave certain jobs or businesses how how do we do this especially if the lord has been nudging our hearts about it what you need is strength in your decision making first let me warn you when god gives you a decision listen no please mm-hmm when God gives you a decision to say, for example, you are the husband of a wife. 
with four children, five children, or one child in this economy. Then God says, leave your job, leave your kindred, leave your family to a place that I will show you. Go to God in prayer and ask God, what is the meal plan? Did you hear me? People have suffered pain. After 10 years, they say, I didn't hear God. I'm not saying you should not make that decision. But go to God and find out what is the meal plan, number one. Number two, take counsel from people that have told that path. When you go to people who have told that path before, you will hear things. Did you hear what I'm saying to you? Let me say this here. Dr. K will say, I have never used pharmacy in my life. Somebody's on the pew hearing that. They say, once God, a campus student is coming out of school say, this heat of ministry is burning so deep. I have to express it to my world. They are burning ministry. Ah, I will scatter everywhere. I just want to leave school and show the world how fire free, fireful I am. But when he's telling you that, when Dr. K went to US, he was selling computers. Yes or yes? He was importing computer. So if you see me on social media and I say, Pastor Shola is doing, look. <laughs> no, let me balance this up. I've prayed for people before. This is honest truth. Because sometimes we don't tell you people these things. I've prayed for somebody before. Something happened tremendously to the person. And the person came back and, sent, and said, P.S., you gave me a word, so, 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 so. This thing happened to me. P.S., I want to sow a seed to you. I was not, I was in the most relaxed mood. I wasn't fasting, I wasn't praying, I wasn't even eating while he was talking. As he was done, he gave me the envelope, I touched the thing. It swells higher than life, you know. <laughs> By the time he left, I opened the thing, $5,000. But here it is. The more you stay in the presence of God, in your calling, your graces increase. It gets to a point that you might not necessarily need to do certain things again. <laughs> you, you just came out on campus. So. <laughs> Be wise. You will not suffer. It does not mean God doesn't lead people along those lines. If God is going to lead you along those lines, he would have programmed pain. <laughs> Look, uh, I'm serious. So. He would have programmed long suffering inside your spirit. No, God knows all of us. Me, I don't know how to suffer long. <laughs> Somebody said, me too. <laughs> Glory to God. So God has looked at me and said, this one, we need to use him for a generation. So we need to first start with him with a soft life. So that, uh, so somebody say, I love it. Anyway, your home might be programmed. Like Apostle, you know, there are people, they program that thing with them. So it's okay. You would have that conviction in your spirit. So I'm not saying that it doesn't happen. Don't get me wrong. People have gone through that path. They never, and they paid the price. Five years, ten years, they had that waiting power. They had that tenacity. Boom, the lamb light came and doors opened for them. But you have to know what God has told you to do. Did I answer your question there? Praise the Lord. Somebody is praying, let it get to my turn. I need my own, my own answers. All right, let's run. We have... What do you do when, seems to, when things seems to get worse as you intensify prayers and confession of faith? That's a good, good, good question. What do you do when you have intensified prayers and you have been confessing and things rather grew worse? Listen. The Bible says about the, the woman with the issue of blood. She has done everything she know to do, but the Bible says, but what rather grew worse. The difference with that woman, listen to what I'm saying to you there. She said to herself, if I may but touch the hem of his garments, I will be made whole. A woman with the issue of blood that should not be seen amongst the crowd stood up and went after Jesus, irrespective of what people were going to say about our uncleanliness. When you are intensifying in prayer 
and you are intensifying in confession and nothing is happening, begin to act. Begin to act. Let me tell you something. Listen, you must learn how to act play for your own self. And while you are acting the play, you are laughing. You, you have been confessing for a job. You don't have a job. Fine. Wake up in the morning, set up an office. And open laptop and say, um, Tade, you are acting. Listen, programming is going on already. Every one of us that are preaching today, we are at one point in our life, held microphone, show mic, which is called remote. And we're, Abby, we will look at ourselves in the mirror and be saying, glory to God, glory to God. As far back as when I was in school, I was laying down on chairs. Receive all the ghosts now, chairs. That is what it means to practice the word. Wake up and wear your agbada. Look, you might think this thing is a joke. Wear your agbada and bring out money. Don't spray, you know that they are catching. <laughs> Why are you laughing now? <laughs> I'm dancing, you're laughing. <laughs> yeah, nah. So, just don't spray. Oh. <laughs> you spray, you stay. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, let's go on. Mountain of answers. So, what to do when things seem, when it gets worse? So, start, start programming. Look, every car that I have driven, every, this thing is a practice. try it. It works. Don't wake up in the morning, you, you are looking for a job and you are waiting at 12 and you are yawning at 12. <laughs> when we go do it, sha. <laughs> this kind go do. I never see your kind do. The world wind of testimony is blowing my direction. <laughs> it's breeze that is blowing. Breeze. <laughs> Good breeze. Stand up. Some of you, the acting there would be to volunteer. Yes. Divorce laziness quickly. The acting there might be to go and volunteer with someone. Say, I don't want to be paid. I just want to carry your bag and be following you. Because in that phase, what God is cooling you with is exposure. You have a sound mind, but you are not exposed. But the kind of job you need to work in requires exposure. So that's what you should do. Begin to act. And the Bible says, I've not done all to stand. Stand there for. Now let me quickly say something. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Please listen to this. Wow. Holy Spirit is such a good spirit. Once you've started confessing the word, and you have not seen the results and you are praying and it's growing worse search your heart if there's any evil way in me turn me life everlasting sometimes there might be offense there might be guilt there might be shame there might be things coloring the manifestation search your heart once your heart is right and the manifestation are not seen yet begin to act. In just a matter of time you will see the result in your life. Did somebody get what I said there? Yes, Praise the Lord. Where do I go from here? Wow. As God has instructed me to wait and not to do anything while my friends are progressive, progressing in their life, it's quite hard. That's a very good question. Where do you go from here, from here is you go nowhere. <laughs> yeah. Let me say this to you. That actually happens where God tells you to just wait with me. Stay with me. Usually, it's a sign of a coming speed and a training. But what I have found is that people wait in hope that Waiting means doing nothing. 
Can I correct that mindset? Waiting actually means doing plenty. When God says wait, he did not say don't do anything. And can I say this to you also? When God says wait, it doesn't mean that all that you do for 24 hours is to pray. When God says wait, that book he told you to write five years ago, can you pick it up and start writing while you are waiting? That research that you're supposed to be doing, can you pick it up and start researching while you are waiting? Waiting doesn't mean don't do anything. While you are waiting, sharpen your skills. While you are waiting, develop a particular area of your life that is in connection with your final destination in life. In other words, God has told you that you are going to be someone who will be speaking to the world. And you are in waiting season. And your English is, can I surely, can I? While you are waiting, brush it up. Does somebody hear what I'm saying? Yes, sir. While you are waiting, you go somewhere and they tell you the way you dress is like balloon. While you are waiting, learn how to dress better. So that when preparation and waiting meets, and it's time for manifestation, you are ready to fly. Don't prolong manifestation because you did not do the things that wisdom should tell you to know. Let me tell you something. There are some things God will not tell you. He won't tell you what to eat. Give me water to drink. Give me water. Did God tell me now that I drink? Okay, I'm not drinking again. Did, did God say I should not drink again? My decision. What you wear is your decision. How you speak is your decision. In fact, as anointed as I am, I am limited with the vocabulary that I have to use to communicate. Even though I'm anointed, I am limited with the vocabulary. If I go and expand my vocabulary, I can communicate better. God will not tell me that one. He can nudge my heart. But wisdom knows that in the parameter of your calling, you must be good at it. Did somebody hear what I'm saying to you here? The Bible says, study to show thyself what? Approved towards God. In other words, there are certain rewards that comes from levels and continuous levels of progress, excellence, certain approval comes. Even with God, there are certain things you get to a level that you are so good at and approval comes. Study to show thyself approved towards God. The study there is not only studying of the word, while that is true, you must study in the area that God has called you to be to show yourself approved. No matter how anointed I am, if I go for a healing crusade and I've not skewed myself in how to operate in the anointing, the healing anointing, I'll be very anointed, but I'll not be able to exercise it right there. Because I've not, I've, I've not studied, I've not understood the ways of the Spirit where that is concerned. Somebody getting insight here? Yes, sir. How can I navigate through the season of learning about God and myself? When I often struggle and feel lost. I'm going to answer this question prophetically by the person here. This person needs to find someone that would teach them the word. Teach him or her the word. You need a teacher. You need a teacher. I don't know who this person is, but that's what the Lord says to tell you. You need a teacher. You need somebody that can help you understand what it means to be lost. Someone says that I'm lost because the feeling I have when I come to church doing the word is not the feeling I have when I'm studying the word of God alone. So it means that God is distant from me. That's not true. You can never experience God by feelings. You can only experience him by faith. Faith is that it's right there with you, irrespective of you believing that it's there or not. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's why faith is different from fear. Faith is always there. Fear is a response of something that you can see or you cannot see. Is somebody getting me? This person is a teacher. Let me run quickly. 
I have experienced God's mercy. However, I want big problems. There's a big problem. Where is it? I want you down. You highlighted the problems, big ones. Okay. What can I do when I'm sure God has led me to join the new with confirmation, but parents are in agreement due to their beliefs and fear of the unknown? You gave me a big problem. <laughs> ah. I can't answer this one on live broadcast now. Should I? Yeah. I should attempt. So tell me, should I? I don't want because. All right. Honor your parent, respect your parent. Honor them with all your life. But I'll say this here. It is very likely that the reason why they have not allowed you to make that decision is that they have not seen a track record of progressive judgment in your decision making. Today, if I tell my dad that I am going to, the Lord told me to go to New Zealand for the work of the ministry and not to come back to Nigeria after 10 years, he will hug me and say, God bless you. Not because I'm matured and old. He will not contest it once. Because there were times in my life where tough decisions had to be made. Like when God told me to leave psychology, leave geology, geophysics to psychology, and I said, I'm going to make that decision. Some of you watched it. And, God, and, I, and my dad was against it. And I made it. And some years ago, he still told me, thank God you made that decision. God has used you to be a blessing to us. So, um, I would just say that um, make your track record more consistent in your judgment. You can't force them to say they should stop seeing you as a child because even when you are 60, to some of our parents, you are still a child. But make your decision making more sound in your judgment. Pray to, the, for, to God for their hearts, that God works on their hearts. The heart of the king is in the hands of the Lord. He turns them in every direction that he pleases. So let God work on, work on their heart. Finally, if God has told you that the new is where you're supposed to be, God is not the author of confusion. Let me say something here very powerfully. And I want you to listen to this. Are you aware? This is very powerful. And I want to say this here. Even when it comes to when people say, God has told me to leave a church or God has told me to leave. Listen to this. Are you aware that when God wanted to liberate the children of Israel, they were held captive and bound by Pharaoh, the tax master, God told Moses, go to the truth to Pharaoh and ask Pharaoh to let my people go. God did not say, you, are, you know what we're going to do? Wake up at night. Around three. Pharaoh used to sleep around that time. Steal the people and run. Be running, all, be running, 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 running. Pharaoh will not catch you. In other words, the children of Israel needed the permission of Pharaoh to let them go. God doesn't break protocol. There are things I don't want to say yet in church. When I get to that place, when God gives me skepta on a level, don't worry. I have skepta. Someone say, is that No, there's a place. No, you know, you know now these things. There's a place. Eh? There's a place. We are getting there. This one is not, uh, there's a place. You will not, if you talk, you can affect people in Brazil. You can affect people in Norway. I'm not saying uh, your Elisha, what's my own name? I'm talking about, uh, sorry, no disrespect to Elisha people. Uh, but look, even to Pharaoh, tax master. Now, God then said, I'm going to even add in his heart. God would have said, go, 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 John. You don't need permission from Pharaoh. When Agai and Sarai had a problem, I think Genesis 16, she left Sarai's house. You know what God said to her? He says, go back to your master until she releases you. 
So in church, I say, walk out a leader can say, God, God has spoken, and I'm going tomorrow. There's a, there's a wisdom of release. Go and read the Bible. So we said, we do many things out of emotions, and we wrap it with the frame of God's word, and say, God has said. God said, I have to go now. God doesn't talk that way. Go and read the Bible. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, I have answered that question to that person. Another problem, question. Okay, it's there. I have a theft problem. Good. I think it's as a result of my childhood. My parents used to manage a lot. Then I started stealing. You see why these sessions are important? I, I think that maybe we need to just even do a lot of these kinds of sessions. Because nobody will raise their hands. So the theft problem can be PD. <laughs> <laughs> or it's me, self. So nobody's... And it's good because, you see, we need to create this kind of avenue where people can ask questions and without feeling judged. And we can use the word to help people. Because people are receiving the word, but they don't know what to do. They say, wow, 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 glory, glory. But they don't know what to do with it. Look at this now. He no sense whosoever that person is, I love you with the depth of my heart. Innocent. He says, I have a te theft problem. It says that my parents used to manage a lot. Then I started stealing. I have not exactly stopped. That's the end of the question. So I'm not sure this person really wants to know how to come out of it because he did not say or she did not say. Um, so it's likely um, it's working. So, but I would now finish the question for you and say, how do I come out of? Now, this is the answer. Like we said last week and during the, the, the tongue and tongues teachings, we said that every um, childhood challenges are unresolved, every adulthood challenges, pardon me, are unresolved childhood issues. As a baby, as a child, we soak in a lot of information. Listen to this. Of your present, listen to what I'm saying, no? and people's present and future. Let me explain what I mean. If I don't believe that God is good, I am now 35, 36, 37, or 40, and I don't believe that God is good, or I don't believe that God answers prayers, it's a combination of my present and my future thoughts about God. If I have a child that is three years old, four years old, five years old, that my present, something that has taken me almost 20 to 30 years to come into that ideology, when I'm talking to that child that is just three years old, I have put into that child system my own 30-something years belief and experience, and I've put it into a three-year-old, four-year-old child's brain. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? And, has, and I've made that, that child's reality. In other words, she's already functional. Or she is already functioning in a reality of somebody else's past and present of 30-something or 40-something years. Did somebody get what I said there? So every child is in danger, endangered by the kinds of people and the thought patterns of the people surrounded, surrounding that child. As it is with you, so it is with everybody around us. So what happens is certain experiences in our past, like traumas. For example, when I was growing up, there was a particular time until God really helped my dad financially. When I entered into school, I used to have problem with confidence because they would come and tell us at some point, that if you have not paid your school fees, stand up. And before I won't stand up, my colleagues would have been shouting my name. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God, up, 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 up. Yeah. So, for me to be this bold and audacious, I had to break the barrier of always believing that 
they will call my name because we could not afford certain things. So it's a childhood trauma that person is dealing with, which is scarcity. And because I've experienced scarcity so much, I have to find my way in life. Particularly when it looks as though God is not even now answering my prayer. So I have to resort into stealing. Now let me say this to you. What is now going on with that person? Let me tell you how demonic oppressions happen. Is the devil looks for a loophole and build a castle in that loophole. So that thing is no longer an habit. A habit. It's now a spirit in oppression. In other words, everything you don't deal with in your childhood can be invitations of certain spirit that, that powers that experience. Everything have all these altered things. So there are things that power certain experiences. So if you like to take what is not yours, the devil is the one that still kill and destroy. So there are certain spirit that powers that experience. You want to stop, but you cannot stop. I don't know if you, you don't understand what I'm saying. For example, there are some of you, you don't trust people, but you want to trust people. But you grew up how? You were from a polygamous family. Five of you. Your mom or your dad, you have ten other brothers. They all bear your son name or your own son name, the same blood. But your mom is going for a wedding and she cannot leave you in the same house with your ten brothers. She would rather take you along with her and keep you in a friend's house that is maybe 50 minutes or whatever hours away from you. You grew up already conditioning to believe, conditioned to believe that you can't really trust anybody. Because if you cannot trust, do you know that there are people who are married, wow, such an anointing already, who by certain experiences, they cannot even allow their female child or their male child to be with the father or the mother. So, come, um, so, 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 did, did daddy touch you today? Because of an experience, a scar that happened. The moment the devil can see suspicions there, suspicion there, you would get married with suspicion. He would build a tent, but you will be interpreting it as discernment. What is suspicion? And sometimes the devil now even gives you a chance for you to lay claim of your discernment by you being correct many times about your decisions or what you suspected it was true he said can you see that you are a discerning person so you wear the heart of discernment unknown to you you are in deception by the devil thinking you are discerning but what the devil is doing is is heightening the weight for of your suspicions in your life the only way to deal with that thing number one is that you must heal from that experience let me say this to you. I have no problem with therapy. They have their role, they have their part. But the soul of man is so deep. There are certain things that, that's why there is what you call therapeutic relapse. You can have therapy and relapse. There is man, human beings, we are so deep that there are, there are certain places in our lives that only the word of God that can get there. Only the word of God. Only the word of God. Hey, human beings. Only the word of God. How do you do that? By exposing yourself to the word of God. Not only to the word of God, by exposing yourself to the hearing of the word or the listening of the word, but by practicing the word of God. Number two, by seizing moments of the anointing in services like this. I've laid hands on somebody on this kind of situation before that is a sporadic liar. Unprovoked. <laughs> like they didn't tempt you to lie and you lied. You say, how are you? Not good. <laughs> like you must say something opposite what is correct. 
when this lady told me the story, as I wanted to lay my hand, the Lord told me, put your hands on her ears. The moment I put my hands on her, on her ears, phew, the money compression started. And I knew it. It's a stronghold of the spirit here. The devil has held this one. The Bible says, ought not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom the devil has bound on these 18 years, you can be a daughter of Abraham. But if you do not know that you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, and you can free yourself before Jesus comes and free you, you understand what I mean by before Jesus comes and free you? I'm talking about her when she was there. By the fact that she was in a covenant with Abraham, she could stand up. That's why I said, oh, no, this one, being a daughter of Abraham, the cross there was, this woman has covenant now. How come she doesn't know it? So, the way to deal with this situation is, number one, accept that you don't know, you no longer want that life. See all your gains that these things you are getting from it is not towards God. Number two, go and report yourself to them that can help. Say, I'm, I still help me. But most importantly, listen to this, most importantly, Trace the source of that thing, which this person has done. If I was you, if I was this person, I would now go and start because the root of this thing is lack. That's the root of it. Go and start feeding on the word of God where abundance is concerned. That's your only antidote to get out of it. Full stop. The root of this thing is lack. Now, guess what? Even when you have more, I used to work in a foundation. If you give a prostitute 20 million naira, they will collect it, leave there for two weeks and go back there afterwards. It's a spirit that is now powering the thing. Praise the Lord. Did somebody get something there? Wow. I, okay, another question is, I want to break out of this financial dependency on my boyfriend. That's very good. But I don't know how. I have no savings and no one to help. What should I do? I stay with him. That's good. Very good question. You know, this is a... Um, look, look. Amen. Pastor <laughs> The new pastor... This is your ship, so. No, listen. I didn't say that, and I'm saying something. I'm saying that to say that if we do a conference of let us talk you will give God thanks for your life that at the end of the day all of us have problems including the pastor that is advising you ah. <laughs> even that laugh is a problem <laughs> even that laugh is a problem now I love the openness and the vulnerability of these questions because let me tell you what this thing is doing for all of us. It's, bind, it's binding us together. And we need more things like this. Because people are going through a lot. People are, people are dealing with real issues. I don't have a place to stay. Let's be, let's be real. You know, sometimes we can just say, just believe the word, believe the word. Like, I don't have a place to stay. I can't eat. My boyfriend has a house. So, so why can't I stay there? Believe the word, believe the word. God has supplied all my needs through him. Yeah, and God is good and his message endures forever. Amen. After all, he has forgiven me ahead and I'm the righteousness of God. Now, let me answer this question. Please, this is a very honest, sincere question. The only danger of this, or no, not the only, one of the many dangers of this is that you can have the marriage but lose the dignity. That's so powerful. And when you're no longer clothed with dignity, it takes time to build it back. You would have to constantly prove yourself that you want something. That is too much of a price to pay for someone that you're going to spend the rest of your life with. Listen to this. 
you must come into everything you come into in your life with some sense of dignity. Even if you're on the lower receiving end. They must not, you see, that C finish must not enter finish. You hear what I said? C finish must not what? Enter finish. Let me say this here. I think many people don't want to enter into the pit of Joseph, but they want to be enthroned like Joseph. To enter into the pit of Joseph might mean that for the future that I've seen ahead of me, I am very fine with making certain decisions in my life that would mean that I am not even in the radar. You, if it means that you have to go to your auntie's house, your cousin's house, your uncle's house, your friend's house, and you know that the price to pay there is to be sweeping every morning. Sweep undignified with your auntie because it's a temporary situation with your auntie. But the one that will live, live long, and let me tell you what happens. Once you get married like that, you are going to constantly feel the need to overcompensate. And once you begin to feel like you have to compensate for something, you no longer have a say in that marriage, but you are in that marriage. Now, if you're already in that situation, I can help you. Please rest up something. If you're already in that situation, I can help you. What you need to do is that you're going to go and pray Psalms 98, verse 17. Let the beauty of the Lord God be upon us and establish the works of our hands. Yes, establish the works of our hands. What will happen there is God will now decorate you with a new glow that is undeniable to men. Praise the Lord. So, number one, pack your things tonight. Don't stay till tomorrow, my dear. Pack your things tonight and find somebody's house that you should go to. It says, I have no savings and no one to help. That's a very powerful clause. Unfortunately, right now, you don't have anybody, including your boyfriend. The reason why you think you have nobody right now is because there's somebody that can fill that role. That role. Look deep within. In some cases, if it means going back to your village, go back. I'm telling you the honest truth. Because what you're about to enter, you're going to be in it for the rest of your life. So, I want to break out from this financial dependence. Yeah, let me pray for that person. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray that in the next three months, the Lord will give you a turnaround story Amen. that will change your life Amen. in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Let me give you an e-org. Amen. All right. We have to close now because of our time. Wow. Another thing I want to say to that person, if you are still, go to your pastor and ask your pastor, there is what we call pastoral care. And under pastoral care, there is welfare. If you are a part of the new Ikeja, it is Pastor Matthew. Stand up to the camera, let them see your face. At least, they should be able to give you something to feed for at least a month. It was full stuff and all of those things. Amen. Show his face so. That's the pastoral care pastor. Come on, stay. For the new Ikeja. I don't know the other church's pastoral care, but I know Ireland is Chibikim. For Ireland Church, if I'm correct. I think it's Chibikim. Abby? Chibikim. I don't know the other. So, other pastors, go. If you don't know them, thank you. Go and meet your, sin, your resident pastor and say, I am honestly, I'm the person you know. How can you help? And sometimes they might be able to connect you to somebody. Go and stay in this lady's house. And you two, you, women and girls, if they come and meet you, open your house to Amen. All right, let me take this last one because of time. Praise the Lord. Amen. 
I want to evangelize. I feel like it's key to my next level. But every time I step out to even speak with a teenager, I lose the words and my thought. There's a confidence issue there. And um, give me another very tough question. I want problem. Family problem, demonic problem. Somebody said, I don't have a problem. You have to build courage. I used to be like that where I found it very difficult to speak. You know? But I started practicing how to speak. This practice thing is a thing. I'll practice to speak outside, inside, where I'm alone. I'll practice to speak. And I started building my confidence there. So sometimes you might want to practice what to say. You don't have a problem with um, when to speak with a teenager. Um, you, don't, you, sh you shouldn't even have a problem to speak to people. Practice the intensity of speaking to people, and I think you will not have a problem. Praise the Lord. All right, another one. Should I quit my job if my employers hasn't paid me for cons consistently for six months despite my friend's advice and my recent feeling to leave? All right, you would be a very good wife <laughs> that will stay with your husband through thick and thin. Wow! Now, let me answer that question. <laughs> six months is too much. Um, deception can also mean false hope. Don't worry, we are paying next week. Particularly when you think of the arrears. Like if they gather the six months together and land like this. <laughs> you will come and say, are you dancing or what? Are you dancing? Are you dancing? But yeah, you might never see that. Now, have you judged that boss's character by his words and his integrity? Does he have a track record of integrity of his words? If he does, and you feel something in your inside not to go, let me just say this way. You must have a word from God to tell you not to go. Then you can stay. If not, baby girl, tonight, not tomorrow, today, today. All right. I'm an artist. I don't do... I don't, I don't do gospel music, but secular music. My question is that, is it right for me as a Christian to push for secular music? That's very good. All right, let's, let's put some decorum when we are in church. Amen. That's what we do to honor the presence of the Lord. Amen. We can sit in our boss's office and put our phones on and all of those things. That's, when we come to church, let that be part of our education. Make I check my phone, Shah. <laughs> okay, okay. It's my education. People would like to laugh in this church. I hope you are getting blessed. All right, let me close with this. You know, I think there is a, a Christian delusion that makes us believe that once you are Nebuchadnezzar, God cannot use you. Are you aware that God used Pharaoh? It's just that's in the opposite. Let me answer the question straight. Look, what is secular? Let's define it. Why do we as Christians like people say, we're not doing, you're not doing secular office. You're not doing secular law. You're not doing secular doctor. So it's not that you get to the doctor and say, are you a Muslim? If you have brain problem and they want to remove your brain to fix it well, and I say, wait, 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 you pray in tongues. <laughs> Before you say that you are gone, do you check who flies you? When you want to go on pilot, say, if it's a Muslim that is flying me, I'm not flying this plane, no. You just enter in faith. In fact, you don't even see who's flying you. You just trust your destiny in faith. Now, there is nothing absolutely wrong. In fact, we need more people in those spaces. 
Now, what is wrong is if that space consumes you. And I always say this to people that are eager to ask these questions. That your integrity, your values must be held to your chest. Very well known, practiced and tested before you enter into certain fields. Case in point, statistics have showed that the people who fought government, the moment they are voted into power, they become the corruption of the government. The people are saying those things, stoning, they get there and become a problem. So, what are the things I will never do? Know it before you enter there. If I'm going into music, for example, I'm not going to have girls with pants and bras dancing around my music video. I'm not going to do that. That's a no-brainer for me. But there's nothing wrong with you singing a love song. Nothing wrong with that. I've seen people who, you know they are struggling. They are literally struggling to sing temple music. You see the, everything, the, the guy's vibe. This guy has star power. You can see it. The way he car when he comes on stage, the way he commands the crowd. But he wants to be squatting like, see me. And he wants to say, Asha, Asha. Asha, I'm Asha. So, Know what the Lord has called you to do. Keep yourself like the three Hebrew boys. Keep yourself in a great company. And know your values, what you're not going to cross. And be accountable to somebody. Once you have that, fly. We need more people there. You know what has happened to the church? We have to go continue this question and answer session another time. Were you blessed? What has happened to us in the church is that many people who have that gift they don't know how to contend with the world so they hide in the church they don't know how to contend for space they don't know how to contend so it's easier here so they say me i'm called to sing what they don't know how to contend for space and this generation is a jacob is a joshua generation you have to contend for space you have to fight for jurisdiction. You have to fight for territory. That's this generation's work. Finally, we'll take this. I don't know when next we're going to do this, but we should do this often, yes? yes All right. What do you do with, with deep negative speaking parents who deeply doubt you in your individual development in Christ based on your past experiences? That's a very deep one. Whatever they are saying to you, keep saying the right thing back because what have strong goals, particularly that of your parents. Let me close with this. Please rise, let's close. Did somebody get something here? Everybody on the sound of my voice, I want to give an assignment tonight. Hmm? Because the Lord said I should say that before we go. I want to give an assignment tonight. Please do it. When you get back home tonight, take 10 minutes of your time. Speak to your past. Speak to your present. And speak to your future. Disconnect every tie of your past. Speak to the fluidity of your present. And speak to the greatness of your future. Please do what I said to you to do. Is somebody get what I'm saying? Do it. Be careful of suggestions this season. Be careful of your subconscious as well. And keep speaking your way to the top. What I would try to do is I'm going to pre-record all these questions. I'm going to play it on YouTube. Is that okay? So I'll try and do that next week. So if you have more questions... We call it navigation with PS. So
if you have more questions, you can still send it in. And maybe sometimes this week, it's a premiere on YouTube so we can answer all the questions. Glory to God. All right, next, tomorrow I continue the series on murmuring. I hope we've been able to attack and handle this first part. And so we continue tomorrow on murmuring. Were you blessed? Yes, sir. All right, let's give our seats to God as we close. All right, that's our offering. If you want to give to God, give your offerings to the Lord. Praise the Lord. The person I want to pray for online. Oh, wow. All right. While, while, we, while, we pray, while we give our offering, I pray for that person online in the name of the Lord Jesus right now. That covering cast and that rag of shame is yanked out of your life right now. Amen. From today, that demonic oppression, that transitional, transactional demonic oppression ceases in your life right now. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody, please look at me. I need just one minute from you. One minute. While I said that, the Lord said to declare to the church that everyone should go into a seven days intensity of prayer. Some of you have been feeling it. Spend longer hours in prayers. I want to encourage every pastor who can organize a, a prayer maybe on a Saturday or a week I don't know five hours six hours across the new churches I, I, I feel like a circle has ended and pe people need to come into something else but it's going to require long hour of prayer and the prophetic so we'll pray for five hours and then we can move in prophetic with the words of wisdom and things like that so from tomorrow if you can do at least two hours of praying in the spirit intensity across all the new churches we're going to enter into something intensity 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 in Jesus name you will not die before your time Amen. you will experience everything God has written concerning you Amen. and it will be truly a year of harvest for you Amen. in Jesus mighty name all right, Father, we thank you for the seeds. We put it in the house of Jesus, and we thank you because it multiplies. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right. See you on, um, tomorrow in the new Ikeja, Lekki Island. I will start teaching on the murmuring. You want to continue that series. It's going to be so, so powerful. God taught me so many things I wanted to share with you guys, but tomorrow we'll continue that. And then Sunday, across all the new churches, um, we, we continue our service. The new Abuja is having a second meeting tomorrow um on saturday so if you have friends share the link please let's do this together as a church we're going to be meeting with workforce and people to join us as we begin this mighty move of god in the city of abuja praise the lord hallelujah all right let's take our creed and we go we're going to take the last part of the creed that's the last part as sure as god helps us are we ready yes, sir. all right lift your right hand and let's say it together one two ready go as sure as god helps me I will, I will not give up. up. I will not give in. I will not quit. I will not fail. I, I will not fear. I will not die. Until my job is done and victory is won. I am the new. I am God bless you, everyone. <laughs>